Hi, I'm John Refrano, and welcome to the Production Assistant Quick Start Tutorial. As the name implies, this is just a brief overview of Production Assistant to get you up and running quickly. We'll show you how to invoke Production Assistant from within Vegas, how to use the powerful batch processing tools, and even how to use Production Assistant in interactive mode. So let's get started. We'll start by how you invoke Production Assistant from within Sony Vegas. For this, you go to the View menu, go down to Extensions, and this will show you all the extensions you have installed. Go to Production Assistant, and then the Production Assistant menu item to bring up the main Production Assistant interface. The first thing you'll notice is that Production Assistant has three major areas. Up on the top, there's a toolbar that has all the interactive tools of Production Assistant. Down at the bottom is a status area that shows you the current status of how Production Assistant is going to process your files. And in the middle is the main area that has three panels, one for source media, one for processing, and one for target output. These go in a logical flow from left to right. Production Assistant can be used in two major modes, a batch mode and an interactive mode. When it's in batch mode, you'll be loading up source media on the source media tab, optionally adding some processes to it to process the media, and then on the target tab, you'll specify your output and how you want your project output. To use it in interactive mode, you'll notice that the source media has an option to use the current project as source. This means it will use your timeline to do any processing on the processing tab. Likewise, on the target output, there's a print project to timeline. This leaves the media on the timeline instead of rendering it out to a file. So by having print project to timeline on the target output and use current project on the source tab, you can sit in the processing tab and add any of a number of processes and they will be processed right with the media that's on your timeline. But let's start in batch processing mode because that's a really powerful mode for Production Assistant. Let's say you were given an assignment to output a bunch of video files for web and possibly for DV. The files are in a 4.3 format, but you want to publish them in widescreen. Furthermore, you'd like to add some background image underlay so that you don't have black bars on each side. And you might want to put chapter markers and create thumbnails at each chapter marker so that you can put those thumbnails on your website and people can see a preview of what's in the video. Finally, you might have to put a network bug on the video that shows at regular intervals or shows all during the video. Normally, this would take you hours and hours of editing if you had to do all these steps to each file. But with Production Assistant, you can automate the entire process. Let's see how. We'll start with the Add button. And I'm going to add some videos. Right now, it is set to Image Files. I'm going to have it show me video files. And I'm going to use some stock footage uh, as an example. Let's say that these were the videos that you were asked to process. We're going to select them all and say Open. And you'll notice all the videos are listed here uh, in the list. Then I can go to the Processing tab, and I can start to add those processes. So one of the things we were asked to do was to add chapter points. So I'm going to go Add. And in Vegas, markers are used as chapter points. We'll add the Create Markers process and say I want to create markers, perhaps evenly space four markers throughout the file. So regardless of file length, you'll get four chapters in every one of these files. And that's been added to the process list. Next, I'm going to add the ability to create the thumbnail images. And for that, we'll use Create Image Sequence. So I double click that. It asks me for a save folder. I'm going to place these on my E drive. Now, an important thing to remember is that each of these processes are done in the order in which you specify them. So first, it's going to create markers. That allows me to say, create an image sequence at markers. Every marker that I have a chapter point will create an image sequence for me. And I can also decide whether I want to preprint the project name and output as a JPEG or a PNG. Next, we're going to add our image underlay. I'll go to background image underlay and select any one of the underlays. And I'm just uh, doing the down arrow here. I like this one here, these northern lights. So we'll add that to the background. Finally, I'm going to add a network bug, and that's an image overlay. Here I'll browse till I find the uh, image I want, and I happen to have a little TV bug image. 
as you can see that right in the uh, right in the corner. It's important that these images do have an alpha channel. This happens to be a PNG file which has an alpha channel. And you'll notice I can have it show across the entire length of the video, or I can show it at intervals. Let's say I have to show it uh, every every 10 minutes, or I can distribute evenly. And what I'd like to do this time, I'm going to say show it five times during the video uh, uh, with an even distribution, and it's going to display for 10 seconds each time I show it. Now you'll notice there's lots of other things you can do. You can adjust the playback rate. Sometimes you've got tutorial information that's a little bit dry, a little slow. You can speed it up a bit. Uh, you can adjust broadcast colors. You can add uh, cine looks, which are these movie looks. Any one of these can be added to the process list. Now remember, they'll be processed in order. So first it's going to create markers, then an image sequence, then a background underlay. That means the image sequence is not going to have the background underlay on it. So what I might want to do is take the image sequence and move it down one so that first it adds markers, adds the background underlay, then it creates the image sequence. If I want the image overlay to be on the sequence, I'll move the image overlay up or the image sequence down. And this way the last thing it does is create those thumbnail pictures. So I'll have a thumbnail of all the processing that's been done. And finally, if this is something that you need to do quite often, you might want to save it as a preset. So I'm going to save this as widescreen with bug. And that's save complete. And so now that's in my list of all the different process sequences that I can do is my widescreen conversion with the bug. Now I'll go to target output. Again, I'll select my target folder. And I want this to be on my E drive. I can select the base file name. If I was going to uh, process all of these files at once uh, in one long timeline, I might want to give it a base file name, but I'm going to process each file individually. It'll use that um, the process file name. And that's controlled under this process tab. You'll notice these options say I can process each file individually or I can process all the files as a single timeline. And notice when I switch that, I get a, a change down here on my status bar so I know that I'm either grouping files or processing the files individually. So now I can go to the target output and I can use one of the rendering presets that's already available or I can create my own. I can edit the list and I'll take the DV widescreen uh, out of the list and say that I'd like to use the main concept and uh, use the Apple iPod as one of the formats. So I'll add that and then maybe I want to do a uh, Windows Media and we'll, we'll do a, uh, a 512KB Windows Media. And then finally, maybe a QuickTime, regular QuickTime 7 format. And we'll do a uh, 1 megabit QuickTime 7 format. So now I've got three formats in there. I'll press OK. Um, I might want to change the name here. Call this my preset for the web. And we'll save that. And now we're all set to go. Production Assistant will take all these files. There could be hundreds of files. It could take you all day to do this manually. We'll take all these files, individually bring them onto the timeline as individual files. It'll do all these processes. So it will lay the file out, create markers at regular intervals, put an image background underlay, the uh, Northern Lights underlay. It will create an image overlay for the network bug. And then it will create an image sequence, which is taking snapshots at each one of the markers, points that we put in. Uh, it will take an image sequence so that you can get little thumbnail images to put on the web. And then finally, once that's done, it will go to the target output and process each one of these files for all three outputs. All you do is press the process button. It asks you if you want to save any changes to your project, just in case you had a project loaded. We don't have a project loaded, so we'll say no. And now it's asking me, what is the project type that you want to use for all of these videos? And I happen to want to use the NTSC uh, DV widescreen as the project that it should put all these video files into. I'll click OK, and then off it goes processing, and you can see it working in the background, adding the files, adding the chapters, putting the image uh, underlay behind it. Now if we move Production Assistant, you can see what's going on here. And now it's rendering that out. So you can see your 4.3 video. You can see the uh, image 
background that's filling in the black bars that would normally be on the left and right. Um, and you can see our TV bug. So it has done all of those things and it will churn through all the files and process them in all three media formats. And this will save you hours and hours of editing. In this next example, I'm going to use a production assistant processing in interactive mode. Remember to do this, we go to source media tab and say use current project. Go to the target output tab and say print project to timeline. And then anything I do in the processing tab will stay in the project. One thing I failed to mention is that you can take this production assistant window and dock it just like any other Vegas window to get it off to the side and out of the way. And it's just like any other tab in the docking window. I've got some video on the timeline and I want to add some cine looks to it, a movie look. And so I'm on the processing tab of production assistant. I'm going to remove all of the things we did before. And then I just want to add the cine looks. I'll go to add cine look and I want to use a um, push 16 millimeter look on this particular film. I click OK and now when I say process you notice that it added that look right to my video. If I don't like the look I can hit control Z and back it off or go to the undo and click back and then use another cine look. Here I'll edit this one here and change it to uh, want to use the Midwest Express, very bluish, and then we'll hit process. And you'll notice I have this nice bluish Midwest Express look to my video. So this is how you can use the processing options inside of Production Assistant as an interactive tool. Well that about wraps it up. Hopefully this has given you a good overview of what Production Assistant can do and how you might integrate it into your workflow. Thanks for watching.